All right, so we are going to consider our whole numbers, uh, the part of integers, everything. So this is a uh, June exam that I want us to go through so that we just uh, make sure we understand the part of our numbers, uh, the calculating of the highest common factor, and also some other simplifications without the use of a calculator. All right, so this is what we are going to have in this revision. Consider what we are given on number one. Consider the following numbers and then answer the questions below. So there we are given these numbers, uh, two and three over four, a mixed fraction, all right, which we can just rewrite also to be an improper fraction. Remember, you multiply, then you add four times two, that's eight, plus three, which is 11. So this is same as we've got uh, 11 over four, which can also be written, I don't know, the way that you want, you're gonna also write as a decimal if you want, okay, which is fine. There we've got a negative 0, 0.234, for something like that, uh, and so on and so on, all right? The square root of negative nine, which cannot be simplified. We cannot even simplify this. Uh, then we also have um, the 25, the square root of, all right, the cube root. This one is the cube root of negative 27. The cube root of negative 27, a number that multiplies itself. So you can also do it like this. Uh, this is you and your calculator, guys. You can also check like, uh, okay, let me just try and simplify. The square root of negative nine. Can I simplify the square root of negative nine? It's impossible. We cannot simplify this. That's why I say this cannot be simplified. But the cube root of 27, you can simplify this. Uh, let's check on our calculator, the cube root. That is this one under uh, just on top of the square root. So it's going to be shift. You press the square root. So that's the cube root of a negative 27. This must give us a negative three. Okay. So this can be simplified. It gives us a negative three at the end. Uh, all right. Five over zero. This cannot be simplified. Five divided by a zero like this is math error. It cannot be simplified. This cannot be simplified. So meaning to say it is the same thing like uh, what we had on this one. It cannot be simplified. Then just, just 19, okay? So the, these questions was from the list, write down from this list, write down a, a prime number, a prime number, a prime number. What is a prime number? That is a number that is only divisible by one and itself one and itself one and itself so you can't talk about this 11 over for uh this one is a fraction but uh to consider because we, we consider that a fraction so there are so many things that you have to consider there do not focus about that just focus on the whole numbers all right the 25 and the nine which one is a prime number there uh and i mean the 19 so that's 19 in 19 there's only one and itself there's only one and 19 in 25, there is one there, there is a five. There is a 25, so many numbers. It's supposed to be just one in itself. So the correct answer there was going to be a 19. All right, then be a square number. A square number is the one that when you determine its square root, just like square root of four, you can have the answer, square root of four too. So we saw that uh, we can simplify square roots of numbers. These are square numbers. We can't simplify the square root of 11 over 4. It's going to give us a decimal. This one is already impossible. This one is already impossible. The square root of 25 is what? The square root of 25 is a 5. So meaning to say there we have a square number. So 25 is truly a square, a square number. Okay? See, a negative integer, it's not just an integer, but it's a negative integer. 19 is an integer, remember? 25 is an integer, but we need a negative one. So we are we, if we if we we are not simply if we are, uh, we have not simplified this one, the cube root of negative 27, it was going to be difficult for you to realize that the cube root of minus 27 is also a negative integer. Because the cube root of minus 27, we got what? minus three so that is the cube root of minus 27 is a negative what integer we get a negative three if we simplify that you do not write the minus three the answer you write from the least 
what you see from these numbers, how is it written? All right, then a non-real number. A non-real number is a number that cannot that, that we cannot simplify. Anything that we cannot simplify, anything that cannot be uh, cannot be simplified. That is a non-real number. Real numbers, these are any numbers that we have, whether they are decimals, whether as long as we can simplify them. But none, like what we saw, the square root of negative, can you simplify the square root of negative nine? No. So the square root of negative nine is a non-real number. Also five over zero, we saw that from our calculator, we cannot simplify five over zero. It's also a non-real number. This does not exist mathematically. We cannot have something like that. It does not exist. That is, that is what it means. All right. Then we move on to question number two. Determine the prime factors of 275 and 350. So this one is just uh, expressing your number as a product of its prime factors, all right? That's our question two. A, so 275 as a product of its prime factors, you do the same thing on 350. So in this case, what is the smallest? Uh, remember the prime numbers that we are talking about, that's two three, uh, five, seven. These are the prime numbers, all right? Two is a prime number, guys, all right? The smallest prime number that we have is two. Remember, it's one in itself, just one and two. So we can't use two. We can't use three. So you, you can even test these numbers. Can I use a two to, to divide uh, two, seven, five? It's impossible, guys. But if you do not know this, then just try. Two, seven, five, divide by two. You can see that this is impossible. You do the same thing, you move on to three, you divide by three, you see, this is impossible because you're having a fraction. You must have an exact value, a whole number. So you move on to five, you divide by five like this. This is 55. So we can start by five. This they are the smallest prime number. On these prime numbers that we are going to use is going to be five, not two, not three, but a five. Five is the one that we are going to start with, all right? So we divided here, we saw that 275, 275 divided by 5 is what? It's 55. So that's 55. Again, we can divide by 5. All right. Let's see. Divide by 5. Is it possible? Yes. 55, we can divide by 5 and we obtain 11. But can we divide 11 by 5? That is impossible because 11 is a prime number. So there is no number that we can use. I, I, I expect for that 11, except for that 11 alone. So that's 11 divided by 11, which is a 1. So it's just going to be 11 only. 11, remember, it's a prime number. It's a list. It's on the list of the prime numbers. Uh, 2, 3, 5, 11, 13, and so on. All right? You move on to 350. You do the same thing. You start with a 2. So this one was going to work because there is a 0 there, multiple. So 350 uh, divided by 2, that was going to work. You can even use your calculator to do that. 353.50 like this, divided by 2, that is 175. So you can divide by 2 in this case. That is going to be uh, 175. But this time, we cannot use a 2. You can even try, but you see that 2 is impossible. You try a 3, divide by 3. That is impossible again. So you divide 175, divide by a 5. This time, you're going to get an answer. So you're going to, have to move. To, you're going to move to 5. 175. Divide by five, what are you going to have? This is the one that you got when you tested. 175 divided by five is 35. So the answer is 35. You try again by five. Uh, this 35 divided by five, all right? That is a seven. So that's five into that five, seven. Seven is a prime number, remember? So there's no number that you're going to use to divide this seven. It's just gonna be a seven as it is. So revise your prime numbers, revise your divisions, revise your multiples to know a division. You must know your multiplication. But yes, the calculator is also there as an assistance, but do know your uh, division, your multiplication. Now it's a continuation. Now, from what? From what we had, from these prime factors. So you can even write this, okay, before we answer that, you can even write this uh, as, you can even write this as uh, the final one, like 275 is equal to uh, 5 times 5. You can even write as 
prime factors in index form like 5 to the exponent of 2 times 11. That's writing as a, as a product of these prime factors in index form. Okay? 5 is appearing 2 times 5 times 2. That's 5 squared. All right? This one, uh, 350, you can even write like this. 2 times 5 is appearing 2 times. That's 5 times 5, which is 5 squared times a 7. Just like that. You can even write your answer as a product of these prime factors. Yes. But the question was just determine the prime factors. Okay. So you are not told like express your answer like this. So you can even express the way that you want. Now determine the highest common factor of 275 and 352 marks. 275 and 350 are the numbers that we had before. So now we need the highest common factor. Remember a factor has to be common. So we, this is just going to be a continuation. All right, so this is B, so the highest common factor. Remember I said, when you are determining the highest common factor and you have expressed your number as a product of these prime factors like this in index form, you consider what is common. All right, so there we do not have a two on this part. So you cannot take these two. We have got a seven this side. We do not have a seven here, so you cannot take this one. We have 11, but we do not have 11 this side, so you cannot take this. But if we check, there's a five to the exponent of two. 5 to the exponent of 2, and it's also having the same, the same exponent. So we just have to take it as it is. It is having the same exponent. So 5 squared, that's 5 times 5, which is 25. But let's say there was a 5 to the exponent of 2, and here there was a 5 to the exponent of a 5 like this. Which one were you going to take? You are going to take the one that has got the smaller exponent when calculating the HCF. You take the one with the smaller exponent. But in this case, they have got the same exponent. This is two. This is also two. So in that case, you just take that as it is. There is nothing like this one. He has got the smaller exponent. No, it's just the same exponent that you have. So uh, that is the idea there. All right. So that was question two, six marks. Then question three, uh, nine marks on this question. Calculate these. That is the following without... The use of a calculator, the calculator is not required. Show working out where necessary, okay? So the first equation we are given a negative nine, that's minus minus five in a bracket. So remember the concept, what is multiplying this bracket is just like there's a one that is outside of the bracket. So if you expand one times negative nine, that's negative nine. Here is just like also there is a negative one. So it's negative one times negative five. A negative to a negative, we understand that's a positive. That's a positive. So you're left with minus nine plus five, which is same as five minus nine and five minus nine is going to give us what? That is going to give us a minus four. Okay, that's gonna be a negative four. Remember your directed numbers. So there was two marks for that. But at this stage, even if you use your calculator, who is going to know that you have used a calculator at this stage? No one. Just that you are not just going to use the calculator at once, but just simplify stage by stage. But no one is going to even know that you've used a calculator at that last stage. So you can even just write it like that. You can even simplify with the calculator at the end. All right, the B part, we are given minus four in a bracket plus minus eight in another bracket. Uh, this whole part is affected by two times negative three. Okay. Let us consider and see what is happening. Just like the previous case, uh, we can see that there is a one outside of the bracket, a one outside of the bracket, which is invisible. So you multiply by this one into the bracket, one and negative four, that will be a negative four. The same thing, positive one, when it multiplies a negative, that's a positive negative there. So it is going to give us a negative eight, one times negative eight, which is negative eight, everything over two times a negative three. So this will be a negative six, a positive to a negative, that's a negative. All right, these are the numbers. So at this stage, even if you use a calculator here to simplify minus eight, uh, minus four, minus eight, no one is going to even know about that. Just simplify. Minus eight, minus, uh, minus four, minus eight, or minus eight, minus four, that is minus 12. Everything over minus six. Now the division, the negative, negative cancel, the six into 12, that is going to be a two. So what they are simply uh, saying there, do not just use a calculator at once, like just evaluate everything on your calculator. No, you can even use your calculator to verify. Use a calculator there, stage by stage. No one is not going to understand what were you even doing there. Okay. 
what you need is to make sure that you obtain the full marks. That is what is important. Show all stages, all right? C, the square root of 25 minus the cube root of uh, negative A. This was a four mark question that you're given there. All right, so you've got the square root of 25 minus the cube root of a negative eight into this. So guys, the square root of 25, which number we talk, we even talked about this, the square root of 25, which is five, a number that multiplies itself to give us a 25. If it multiplies itself, five times five, that's a 25. So if you know the numbers like six times six is 36, it's going to be easier now for you to determine the square root of this because you know, okay, there is a number that multiplies itself to give us 36, which is six. So revise your multiplications, uh, your multiples and this and that. All right, minus the cube root. This is the cube root of negative eight. The number that multiplies itself three times to give us a negative eight. That's a negative two. A negative two when multiply three times, negative two times negative two, that's a positive four. Then a positive four times a negative two, that's a negative eight. So there we have got a negative two. So like I said, even if you can simplify this on your calculator, it's still one of the same thing. We can uh, do that just to verify this. Uh, so you just do this on your calculator. Do not just simplify everything, okay? Just take this, the shift square root, uh, the cube root, I mean, of a negative eight like this, and this is going to give us a negative two. Okay, so that's it. Even this one, negative two to the exponent, you can even just use your calculator negative two like this to the exponent of two, you see, okay, that's a four there. So meaning to say we're going to have plus four. Guys, this is you and your exam. So just try to make sure that you do not lose marks, okay? A minus and a minus, that's a plus. So that is going to be five plus two plus a four. So as you can see, everything now is under addition. So we can add the five plus two to seven plus four, which is 11 at the end. So that is how you could have simplified these typical questions. Uh, on this question, it was a total of nine marks on question uh, number three. So this is your algebra, your numbers. I mean, this is your numbers, your HCF, finding of the factors, uh, working out your own numbers, your integers, uh, knowing about the, the, the part of your science, all right? How to apply the science. That is what they are going to actually ask you. So just be prepared, just be prepared. 